All right, so real talk for a sec. You haven't been glued to every AI update, right? Yeah. And hey, that's cool. Most haven't. But uh, here's the thing. I'm getting kind of hard to ignore. Yeah, exactly. This deep dive, this is for everyone who's been, you know, living their life, not freaking out about robots. No, maybe we should be freaking out just a little. Well, that's what we're going to look at today. Like, how much freaking out is the right amount? The answer might surprise you. We're diving into this report, Situational Awareness, by Leopold Aschenbrenner. Fresh off the press, June 2024. And this isn't some, you know, random tech bro on Twitter. Yeah. This guy, he was at OpenAI. The minds behind ChatGPT. Yeah. The thing everyone and their grandma has an opinion on these days. And even they're a little freaked out by what Aschenbrenner's saying. Okay, so before we go full panic mode, yeah. what's got everyone so spooked? Like, what's the headline here? This report, it's not hype. It's a deeply researched, carefully argued case for why AGI. Artificial general intelligence, right? Yep. The AI that's as smart as a human, it's not sci-fi anymore. And his timeline, well... Don't sugarcoat it. Hit us with it. He thinks it's right around the corner. See, this is why I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. Right. Right, right. But seriously, how can he even say that? Remember GPT-4? Oh, yeah. Acing exams, writing code, even that poetry thing it did. My mom sent me like five articles about it. And that was just a taste. Ashenbrenner, he compares GPT-2, 3, and 4 to like a child developing. Okay, so GPT-2, that was the baby making noises. GPT-3, the kid who won't stop talking. And GPT-4, that's our awkward high schooler who's suddenly acing every test and applying to Harvard early. It's already outperforming most people in some areas. Okay, that's both impressive and terrifying at the same time. Yeah. But hold on, it sounds like this Ashenbrenner guy, he's saying it gets even wilder. He keeps mentioning this counting the ohms thing. And that's where the alarm bells really start going off. Orders of magnitude, that's the ohms. Each one, it's a tenfold increase in capability. Whoa, okay. So GPT-2 to 3, then to 4. Those were big jumps in, like, no time flat. Exactly. And fast progress is one thing. But another OM jump on top of that? That's exactly what Ashenbrenner's predicting by the end of 2027. Hold up. That's, what, three years? Uh -huh. We go from mind blown by GPT-4 to, what, super mind blown in less than three years. That's the core of his argument. Mm -hmm. And he lays out these three factors driving it. Compute power, algorithmic efficiency, and unhobbling. Okay, compute power, that's easy. Bigger, faster computers, right? Yeah, but we're talking massive. Clusters of computers using as much power as small cities, solely dedicated to AI research. Companies are really throwing down the gauntlet, huh? Billions of dollars. This isn't some side project. It's the priority. Okay, so that's a lot of processing power. But what about this algorithmic efficiency? Does that mean the AI itself is getting better at learning? Not just bigger, but smarter? You got it. It's like, instead of just cramming more info in, AIs figure out how to learn more efficiently. But there's a catch. There's always a catch. What, like a robot uprising catch? Not quite yet. It's the data wall. The AI is getting so good so fast, it might be running out of stuff to learn from. Wait, it's going to read the entire internet. Imagine being so smart you've basically memorized it. Where do you go from there? I don't know. Back to grad school. Yeah. Okay, seriously though, what happens then? Does AI progress just hit a wall? That's the multi-billion dollar question, and it's where this unhobbling comes in. It's like, researchers are trying to break AI out of school, you know? Instead of just memorizing textbooks, we're sending it out into the real world. Something like that. And how we're doing that well, that's where things get really wild. So instead of just memorizing facts, we're teaching it to think for itself. Kind of scary, kind of awesome. That, yeah. That's the thing about unhobbling. It's both. Ashenbrenner breaks it down into three areas, and each one just, like, ups the ante on how weird this is all about to get. Okay, hit me with it. What's the first way we're unhobbling AI? The onboarding problem. Right now, AI is crazy smart, but it's clueless about, well, everything. Like that classic trope, you hire a genius straight out of college. Oh, I know the type. Top of their class. Uh, but orders take out by asking for the algorithm for the best pizza. Zero real world skills exactly all potential no practical sense that's ai right now the onboarding is giving them that context like a human coworker would get company info how projects actually work even just letting them browse the internet wait seriously we're giving super ai google access think about it how else does it learn about the messy weird human stuff ai needs to navigate we're plunking it into the same info stream we swim in every day so less skynet becoming self-aware more that one coworker who spends all day on wikipedia hey you gotta learn somehow right but that leads to the second unhobbling longer-term thinking 
See, right now, even the best AI, it thinks in short bursts. Answers, poems, code, bam, bam, bam. But no AI told story writing epic novels over decades? Not yet. It's amazing at sprints, but zero marathon stamina. It can't hold a complex thought or plan over time the way humans can. Okay, so we're giving it strategy games, teaching it to think many moves ahead. It's more fundamental than that. We're talking about rewiring how AI processes information, making it less about instant gratification, more about sustained focus. And if they crack that, imagine the possibilities. AI researchers, writers even. Hey, AI podcast hosts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. But seriously, this is huge, right? If AI can start planning long term, that changes everything. And it gets even bigger because the third unhobbling, it's like we take everything we just talked about and then we hand the AI a laptop and say, go wild. Hold on, go back. We're giving AI with its new long term planning brain actual access mm -hmm. to what, like the whole digital world. That's got to be the things get scary part. Right? Oh, we're just getting started. So not just access, but. Mm. AI is going to be browsing the web, sending emails, booking flights. What, are we going to see an AI CEO by 2025? It's less about replacing us, more like augmenting AI teams working alongside human ones. Augmenting, huh? I've heard that before. Usually right before the robots decide they don't need us anymore. That's a whole other deep dive. The point is, Ashenbrenner's arguing, when you put these three things together... Onboarding, long-term thinking, and now basically giving AI a desk job. Exactly. You get this perfect storm, this acceleration of intelligence that, well, it's hard to even grasp. Okay, look, I signed up for the AI deep dive, not the existential crisis package deal. For those of us just tuning in, what's the five-year forecast look like? Robot overlords or... Ashenbrenner calls it an intelligence explosion. Once AI can automate its own research, things could get in incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. Decades of progress, maybe even centuries, happening in a year. Okay, my brain officially broke. Can we get a visual aid on that? Yeah. Seriously, though, what does that even mean for, like, daily life? That's the thing. We can't predict it. Not specifically. It's not about AI taking our jobs. It's what happens when it's smarter than us, period. And it's thinking about things we haven't even imagined yet. All right. So not overlords, but <laughs> something we don't have a word for yet. Yeah. Comforting. But hey, at least we'll have those robot assistants to make us snacks while we panic, right? It's not about panicking. It's about understanding. Ashenbrenner's not saying be afraid. He's saying wake up. We have a choice right now. Bury our heads, hope for the best. Or, you know, actually do something. Exactly. He compares it to the Manhattan Project. This huge coordinated effort, but instead of a bomb, we're trying to understand super intelligence. So less Oppenheimer, more. <laughs> I don't even know. What's the opposite of building a weapon of mass destruction? Maybe. Building a future where we coexist with something that smart. And that's going to take everyone. Ethicists, philosophers, regular folks. Because this isn't about whose algorithm is faster anymore. It's about, like you said, what does it even mean to be human when we're not the smartest ones in the room anymore? It's a big question, but that doesn't mean the answer has to be scary. Imagine the good AI could do if we guide it right. Solving climate change, curing diseases, things we can barely scratch the surface of now. Okay, so there's hope. I'm holding on to that. But it all comes down to being aware, right? Like actually paying attention to this stuff. Exactly. And Ashenbrenner's report, it's just the start. A wake up call to get people talking, asking questions, and yeah, maybe even a little freaked out because that's how we make sure the future of AI is when we actually want to live in. Well, on that uplifting note, I think we all need a break after that one. Big thanks to Leopold Ashenbrenner for uh, giving us all something to think about. Situational awareness, everyone. Go check it out. Required reading for, well, anyone who plans on being around for the next decade or so. And hey, if this deep dive left you with more questions than answers, well, good. That's the point. Make sure you like and subscribe to Arcane Intelligence so you don't miss our next existential crisis, uh, I mean, episode. We'll keep diving deep so you don't have to. Stay curious, everyone.